is out in theaters now. It stars Idris Elba, Charlton Copley, and is directed by Balthazar Cormacor. I believe I said his name right. And the premise is simple. Idris Elba fights a lion. There's no other way to describe this movie. Idris Elba punches and kicks a fucking lion and fights it. It's as simple as that. And that's what I loved about this movie. It's simple. You see, Hollywood, I feel like this year, has brought these types of movies back. These... Movies that deliver B-movie thrills, they're intentional B-movies, they're intentionally mindless and fun. They're those types of popcorn films that I feel like have been absent from our mainstream releases in the past few years. I've seen quite a bit of these this year and it just reminds me of a lot of those 1990s, early 2000s action movies. Taking me back to those times where I could just kick back, relax, and just shove popcorn in my face, you know? It's that type of movie for me. And I feel like Hollywood recently has really gotten away from the idea that you can just make movies for pure entertainment. You don't have to make something super deep. You don't have to make an Oscar movie every time somebody's making a movie. Yeah, sure, the blockbusters are fun, but most of the time blockbusters are hit or miss. You know, the art, the art house cinema is great, but every once in a while you just need something like Beast that just knows exactly how to entertain you and how to thrill you with all the ingredients of 90s and early 2000s action movies. We've gotten a lot more of these this year. I, I point to something like, just for pure fun, Bullet Train, Uncharted, this movie. This year for these types of movies that are just mindless, this is probably the most fun I've had at the movie theater watching these types of movies this year. Sure, you can pick this movie apart. The characters aren't that great, it's predictable as shit. It's cliched. The characters make stupid decisions. But you know what? Watching Idris Elba fight a lion is something to behold. I don't know what it is about it. It's Idris Elba versus fucking Simba. This is what happens when you kill the entire pride of Simba. Simba is just going to erupt and go off for revenge. Evil Simba is here. Don't piss him off. He was once a lion cub. He is now the Lion King. Show some respect. If I have to talk about an actual aspect of the filmmaking, I did like that there were a lot of great long takes in this movie. It, it was very effective and very clever because it made you feel like you were on the safari, you were part of the adventure, you were experiencing firsthand right up close and personal these lion attacks and you felt the blows and the claws and the brutality of the attacks as well. Especially if you watch this movie in Dolby. I had a lot of fun watching it in Dolby. It's like the camera and the shots in the movie became characters themselves and better characters than the characters that are portrayed on screen. I also feel like this movie's gonna get a lot of comparisons to Jaws the Revenge, a movie that I will probably review on this channel one day, but after this video, and after I do that video, will never be mentioned ever again on this channel because it's essentially the same premise. Jaws the Revenge was it was stupid, for sure, because sharks don't get revenge after their three buddies have been killed. He's pissed that his three other shark buddies have been killed. This seems a little bit more logical. You know, a lion pissed off that his entire pride has been killed by hunters. Now he's out for revenge hunting humans. Makes a little bit more sense. It's a movie that, of course, you have to suspend your disbelief for. There's no realism in this thing at all. I mean, the end fight itself between Idris Elba and Evil Simba proves that. Things with Charlotte O'Copley in this movie prove that as well. And some decisions characters make prove that as well. You're not here for realism. I'm just here to watch a movie like this to be entertained. Of course, I'm thinking about the cliches, the stupidity of everything in this movie, the contrivances, the dumb decisions the characters make, but after a while, that all becomes afterthoughts in movies like this, and once those become afterthoughts, I'm there for the ride. It was a solid 93 minutes to kill for my day. If, if I had 90 minutes, I would just watch this, I would just watch Beast or something similar to Beast. It's one of those movies that you can just pop on late at night if you're bored and just watch some mindless stupidity on screen and allow it to deliver that B-level type of entertainment movies like this should deliver. And take you back to the 90s and early 2000s where action movies didn't mind being mindless popcorn fun. I enjoyed Beast with three quarters worth of a bucket of popcorn. 2022 has really delivered on movies like this and I really hope going forward Hollywood realizes that sometimes you just need mindless dumb stupidity in movies 
and we just like B-level thrills sometimes. I'm not talking about stuff from like Netflix, like The Gray Man or anything. No, not, not that shit. Shit like this, where you can just pop your brain off for an hour and a half to two hours and sit back, relax, shove popcorn in your face, and enjoy the ride. So if you have seen Beast, I want to know what you thought of it in the comment section below. I'll leave my link to my website in the description below as well. You guys are the best. Thank you for watching. My name is Alex Madden, and I'll see you at the movies somewhere.